NASA announced yesterday a shocker that the Artemis program is delayed. No, I'm kidding. It's not a shock at all. It was absolutely predicted and almost predetermined that the Artemis program would be delayed once again. If you remember, Artemis 1 went off in November of 2022, and now Artemis 2, which will have people on board that will go circumlunar, it's not predicted to launch until April 2026. That's about three and a half or even a, maybe a four year gap by the time it actually goes. I'm Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. And so this is something I completely foresaw happening. Even when Mike Pence was announcing that they were changing the dates to land humans on the surface of the moon from 2028 to 2024, I knew that that was not gonna happen. I'm like watching it get slipped so many times that it ends up being in 2028 anyway. But this video is actually not about the first Trump administration. It is about the upcoming second Trump administration and what we might see with the Artemis program. But also mainly, this is my personal wish list. So this is not necessarily what's going to happen. It's not necessarily you know, speculation about what could happen. It is my personal wish list. What I wish would happen if I was Jared Isaacman or Jared Isaacman's assistant. For those who didn't catch the news, I will link to my video above about the announcement that Jared Isaacman is is President-elect's nominee to be the next NASA administrator. So catch that above if you missed that news. So if I was whispering in Jared's ear or if he's watching this video, this is what I would want. And now the caveat is that it's not up to Jared, right? It is up to the White House and Congress and primarily Congress. So Congress will absolutely fight back with a lot of things I'm about to say. You let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with me. Number one, I want to cancel SLS. Yes, I've been saying this for many years. I'm not alone here. You know, I'm not against the SLS as a rocket. I'm against it as the cash cow that it is. <laughs> I don't know how best to put that. It is extraordinarily expensive. It is slow to launch. It is slow to develop. To have this rocket make any kind of sense, it needs to have a much quicker development period and launch more frequently, but it can't because it's just so expensive. It primarily, you know, the primarily existence for it is to bring money and jobs to key congressional districts. And I'm not saying this cynically. This was actually like written in the NASA Authorization Act of 2010. I will link it below if you're curious what it says. It doesn't say it in this language, but it essentially says it wants to reuse a lot of the shuttle hardware and key shuttle testing areas and other things that NASA had already put in place that provided jobs to key congressional districts and states. So that is the purpose of SLS. It is meant to be a cash cow. It is meant to be slow to maximize the cost plus nature of the contract. So it is not in the best interest of US taxpayers in general or the US space program. It is in the interest absolutely of Huntsville, Alabama, where I used to live, so I actually have quite an attachment to that area. It is in the interest of Kennedy Space Center, where I currently live in the area of the Space Coast. So you know, obviously I have an attachment to this area. It's in the interest of you know, Stennis and some other areas of NASA that rely on the SLS and Orion for building, testing, integrating, and launching for its workforce. But again, it is not to the benefit of the US space program and humanity as a whole to have something this slow and this expensive, taking up so much of NASA's budget and holding NASA back. Now, when should it be canceled? This is an area I'm actually uncertain about. I was recently quoted in MIT Tech Review, I will link that below, where I said something along the lines of, it would be logical if it is canceled after Artemis 3. And the reason why I said that is because Artemis 4 requires a larger version of SLS. And that requires a larger tower, which is very, very expensive and very slow. I will link to a video I did about that mess of a towel put together by contractor Bactel. I will link that above. If you want to learn about the most expensive launch tower ever, you can learn about that. But even the vehicle itself, the additions to SLS, are taking a long time. Boeing is really going through quality control issues. There's uh, like a whistleblower that came out, not on the aviation side of Boeing, but actually on the space side of Boeing. I will link to that article down below if you're curious, that just came out this week. So there's issues with the next version of SLS that is needed for the current configuration of Artemis 4. So I don't think the current configuration of Artemis 4 should go forward. That's not to say I'm against Blue Moon, which is the lunar lander contracted for Artemis 4. I actually think Blue Moon is a good idea to complement and supplement the HLS version of Starship that SpaceX is providing for Artemis 3. 
But I think the architecture for SLS carrying these landers is probably a bad idea. And there's probably additional rockets or alternative rockets that could be used, commercial rockets. Now, the good news is that we saw under the previous administration that Jim Bradenstein, the NASA administrator at that time, was actually in agreement. And so was Mike Pence, the vice president at the time, of using commercial alternatives if that was the best and most efficient and quickest way to get humans to the moon. At that time, Alabama had the very powerful and influential Senator Richard Shelby in power, and he has been re retired, so he no longer has that influence. The incoming presumed new NASA administrator, Jarek Isaacman, has also made similar comments about how we should use commercial alternatives if that is the best way to move forward. So I do actually have a hope that this might actually come to fruition sooner than later. Journalist Eric Berger has been saying this whole week that he thinks it's like a 25% chance that SLS will survive, 75% chance that it is going to be cut. We're just going to have to see how this plays out. So again, this is my wish list and not necessarily my predictions for the upcoming administration. Let's talk about Gateway. Often ignored and an even unknown part of the Artemis program, it is sucking up money like crazy for no real purpose. It does not need to exist. I have done a video about that, which I will link above. I understand the geopolitical reasons why it was so easy to say all of the international partners that worked together during the International Space Station over the last 20, 25 years or so, you just transfer to another space station. All those same partnerships, all that same collaboration can still exist with Gateway. And I see that as an easy way to continue to have our partners participate in the Artemis program, but it does not need to be that way. We do not need to stick with the status quo. We can grow, we can lead. We are leaders here in the United States, right? We should be leading. So China has an international collaboration for a lunar base. Why are we not doing the same? My background is in lunar science, and one of the arguments for Gateway is that we can do lunar science. No, you can do lunar science in orbit with satellites. We already do lunar science in orbit with satellites, and we can just add more. There are commercial companies who are planning to launch more commercial satellites to cislunar and lunar orbit. Um, there's, you know, advanced space capstone has already been there, and there's additional ones for the DoD as well, not just for NASA. And so we can do lunar science, lunar you know, reconnaissance and, and space domain awareness and all of that from orbit without people. We do not need gateway. You know what we need people to do is go to the surface of the moon and look at the regolith and study the regolith. And like that, so I, here's my biases because that's what I did for my PhD program. Obviously I didn't go to the moon, but I studied lunar regolith for my doctoral work. So I do have a personal bias here for the science, but as a lunar scientist, I am telling you that I want astronauts to go down to the surface of the moon and that be their focus and not have this sortie system where they're in orbit primarily and they go down for short periods of time and they come back up. I just, I hate that architecture. It is not efficient. I would not mind Gateway if we had all the money in the world to spend, but we don't. NASA's budget is so limited, and that's primarily due to Congress limiting NASA's budget, limiting all non-discretionary funding, not limiting all non-discretionary funding um, to a certain cap, right? So NASA was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with the amount of funding that it got, but Gateway is not necessary to spend NASA's limited funding on. Now, the reality of the situation is NASA can't pick and choose what programs it funds. Congress decides that. So NASA can't say, we're gonna cancel Gateway and funny that funnel that money elsewhere. That's not what NASA can do. But Congress could do that. The White House can try to influence Congress to do that and put out a budget that says we want to cancel Gateway and put it towards a lunar base. And there has been little teeny tiny bits of progress with developing facilities and infrastructure for the lunar surface, but not much. And actually, a lot of it has been DARPA, DOD focused, and not even NASA, uh, and even ESA. ESA said, I think ESA's done about as much work on the lunar budget, uh, on the lunar surface than NASA, and ESA's budget is tiny compared to NASA. ESA is the European Space Agency, by the way. So I want to get rid of Gateway and have that attention, that geopolitical collaboration, that funding go towards the surface, surface um, you know, sustainability for a permanent lunar base. Now, this is not necessarily Artemis related, but we can still do international cooperations with commercial space stations around low Earth orbit in a similar way that the ISS was done. Obviously, this would be commercially run and commercially organized and operated, and we're already seeing this. I have another video where I talk about the international collaborations of commercial space stations, specifically Starlab. 
there are other collaborations going on with other commercial space stations. None of these are actually in orbit yet. So a lot of these are still like theoretical until there's actual hardware being flown. There's hardware on the ground, right? I mean, Axiom and some others have actual hardware, vast. Um, but until it's flying, you know, it's just kind of theoretical. But NASA could put more money towards making these commercial space stations an actual real thing with international collaborations. So obviously, again, it would not be a partnership like the ISS exactly because it would be commercially owned and operated, but similar things can be done with the science on board, with the research on board. And NASA has said it wants to do scientific payloads and send astronauts to do science on these commercial space stations. And that could be an international collaboration as well. In fact, that's what they're already planning. So why not just focus more effort on that? With the added bonus that that would help reduce any kind of potential gap between low Earth orbit destinations. So we've got the ISS that's currently targeted to deorbit in 2030. And then you've got the Chinese space station Tiangong, which is up there and is going to be up there. And if ISS is deorbited before commercial space stations come on board, then we have a gap that the only continuously inhabited space station around the Earth would be the Chinese one. And so that looks bad geopolitically for the United States. Like, I think it's great that China has their own space station doing their own thing, but like geopolitically, it would make a really bad impression on the United States. Like it would look bad if there is no other way for the US and its allies to access a low Earth orbit with people, with astronauts, aside from the Chinese space station. So let's take our focus away from Lunar Gateway and put it on lunar surface and on commercial space stations in low Earth orbit. And finally, let's get back to the idea of lunar science and talk about Viper. So I have a video that I did about Viper. I am passionate about this subject because again, I'm a lunar scientist and I have been involved with this mission sort of on the outside since Resource Prospector, which was canceled. And then Viper was you know, put in its place and Viper is a better mission than Resource Prospector. So I was really excited for Viper. Viper has gone through all of its testing. Viper is ready to fly. So let's fly it instead of canceling it. So again, watch my video that I linked above. NASA recently said that if it, it had kept Viper going and not canceled it, then it might have needed to cancel one or two or three CLIPS missions based on the fact that the testing did really well for Viper. You know, they, they built the thing and then they tested it and all that testing went superbly well as far as I understand. There were no additional costs after the testing. Then really it's just the delay in launch that caused that budget increase, that projected budget increase. So. What I think needs to happen is that Congress needs to give NASA the money to fly Viper. And whether that's a NASA mission or a collaboration between NASA and a commercial partner or a collaboration between NASA and an international partner, I don't care. What I don't want happen is Viper to sit in a you know, high bay somewhere and just sit there and collect dust. Nor do I want Viper's instruments to be taken off, which was NASA's like original proposal, was we're just gonna take apart, we're gonna cannibalize Viper, take it apart now that we built it and give it to other you know, instruments, other missions. And I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and so what I wanna see is Viper the way it is, flown and landed on the surface of the moon. You might notice the trend that I keep saying Congress needs to do this, right? So the new presidential administration and the new NASA administrator only have limited influence over what NASA does. It's really Congress that has the control over the laws and the budget. And so if you feel passionately about any of what I'm talking about, contact your elected representatives, your, your new ones that come on in January, not so much the old ones that might be leaving. Contact them, let them know what you think about NASA's direction. I'm gonna talk about this a whole lot more coming in the next few months as things progress with Jared Isaacsman's confirmation, we could hope, and all the direction that might change or continue under the next Trump administration. So go ahead and follow me here. You can see my studio is almost done. I've got some little tweaking to do with lighting. I still can't find my, my clip on mic. So I will be improving this studio after our house move and you can just watch that progression.